Hey programmers, welcome back. Right now, let's keep practicing with loops and work on the C exercise. So if you haven't given this exercise a shot yet, definitely give it a go. Go to the link in the description, give it an honest shot by yourself, and if you get stuck, we'll totally do all of these problems together step by step. With that out of the way, let's jump into this one. And so it looks like I need to create a C loops folder and I'll paste in this first uh, problem as its own file. And so in this divisible range file, what I want to do is take in three numbers, right? A min, max, and some other number. What I want to do is print all numbers between the min and max exclusive this time that are also divisible by the number. So that'd be by the third number over here. So let's jump right into this one. And I definitely want to start iterating between numbers, min and max. So that should be just some review. So to get this for loop going, what I should notice is I want to be exclusive, right? So if I set let i equal to the minimum, that would begin exactly on the minimum number, but I want to exclude those bounds, right? So I'm going to begin at one greater than the minimum. I could totally do some arithmetic over here. And then from there, I want to iterate up to, but not including max, because again, we should be exclusive with these bounds. And then I'll increment by one every single time. So this will at least give me numbers exclusive between min and max. So let's run the first example. I should get numbers like 18 through 39. So let me try this. All right, 18 through 39, nice. But now I want to narrow down and only print out numbers that are divisible by this third number argument. So nothing fancy here. You already know how to do this probably. Just go ahead and use an if statement and then check that condition, right? So if my number i is divisible by my number, then it should have a remainder of zero when I divide it. And if that is true, then I will print out the number. All right. Recall that the number I'm actually like checking to, for possibly printing out is going to be i, right? Num is what I check it against, right? So if i is divisible by num, then I print i. So let's run that. Nice. And let's try this other example. Should get 12, 16, 20. Cool. And there we have it. So that one wasn't too bad. Let's work on the reverse iterate one now. So I'll take this into its own file. And so here what I wanna do is write a function that accepts a string as an argument. And this time I should print out the characters of the string in reverse. So looking at the example here, my input string is caret. Notice that I should print out T-O-R-R-A-C. That is the characters of caret, but backwards, right? And so let me go ahead and write my function for this. And I'll take in my string. And here, I'll definitely need a loop to iterate through these, but I have to be very, very specific, right? Because I want to iterate backwards. And so if I set let i equals zero, I know that that would be beginning at the first character of the string, right? Because the first character always has index zero. I want to do the opposite. That is, I want to start at the last character. And remember that general pattern. If you want to refer to the last character of the string, then it's in general going to be at the length of the string minus one, right? That would be the index. So if I do like a quick spot check, let's say we're reasoning about this second example over here. If I have box, the length of box is three. If I do three minus one, then I get two, which would refer to the index of the X, right? Cause it's always off by one because when I count my indices, I go zero, one, two, right? So this will start at the last index and I wanna go down to and including the first index, right? Zero is the first index and you definitely want to include it over here. I wanna be sure to go backwards so I should be decrementing every time, right? I'm starting at a large number, decreasing it every time down to a smaller number. So this is looking pretty good. And at this point, uh, let me just console.log the variable i. So I'll look at the indices I print out. These will be good to go, I think. So now that I'm printing out the indices in reverse for the string caret, I just want to use that index to actually get characters of the string. So this will give me now the characters in reverse order. It should be very similar for the last one over here, right? XOB, and there we have it. So hopefully you're getting very comfortable writing for loops, and you should be able to write for loops in all kinds of variations, right? Forwards, backwards, or occasionally maybe even skipping uh, some elements. So now let's work on this remove capitals problem. So in this function, what I want to do is accept the string as an argument and return a new version of the string, except with all the capital letters removed. So if I look at my first example, I have the string forever. It looks like the O is capital and so is the E, and I should exclude those from my final output, right? So I specifically want to avoid capital letters. And so let's step through this one. I'll define my function remove capitals. It's going to take in some string as an argument. And let's think about how we can solve this one. 
So I definitely want to consider every individual character of my string, right? My input string. So I'm gonna need to iterate over it. So here I'll write a classic for loop that just iterates through a string, nothing fancy, right? So go up to but not including string.length, hit every character. And for now, this will just touch every character uh, of my string. So I can say string at index i. And I think with that, I'll create an extra variable that I can just refer to that character as. All right, so if I run the first example, that ought to give me just a printing pattern for every character of the string. Cool, so there I have forever printed out. And so I'm able to iterate through my characters. And what I want to do is make sure that only the lowercase characters uh, make their way into my final output, right? Removing uppercase characters is the same as just like being sure to keep only the lowercase characters. And so what I can do here is maybe just say, hey, if my character is equal to the lowercase version of the character, then I should be good to go, right? And so let's think about what will happen here. Let's say I have uh, some iteration where my char is lowercase f. That means that this char is going to be a lowercase f. And so here what I have to do is evaluate the right-hand side of this equality. So when I take f dot to lowercase, it actually stays as that character. And you know that this condition would be true, right? So this condition would run uh, for letters that are already lowercase. Let's say we had another scenario, right? Let's say I'm on some iteration where I have, let's say, char being capital E. So that means that this char is capital E. And I have to evaluate this right-hand side of the equality again. When I take capital E and I turn it to lowercase, I get lowercase E over here. And now this statement would be false, right? And so this is what I can leverage to really ensure that I keep all of my lowercase characters. And so what I want to do is uh, really take that character and add it to some output I'm going to return, right? So if I look at the examples here, I want to return a string. I need to set up that data, right? So I'll call it let new string equal an empty string. And as I hit all of my lowercase characters, I'll make sure they're added to my new string. And only after my for loop should I return that new string. All right, and I avoided all of the uppercase characters. So I'll give this a go. And there we have remove capital. So let's keep it rolling. And now let's work through this raised power problem. It's gonna be a nice little math based one. And so this problem, I wanna write a function that takes in two arguments, a base and an exponent. And those arguments are both gonna be numbers, right? What my function should do is return the base raised to the exponent power. So for example, if someone calls raised power of two comma five, that means do two to the fifth power, that's gonna be 32. And just to review some math, how do we get that answer of 32? Well, two to the fifth power means take two, multiply it by itself five times over, right? In a similar way, if I did a raised power of four comma three, what I do is take four and multiply it by itself three times over to get 64. So I definitely have a feel for some like repeated operations here. When I have repeated operations, like a repeated multiplication, think about using a loop. Let's go ahead and give this a go and I'll define my function. So how can I start attacking this one? We'll try to recall how we solved like the product problem from last video. What we'll want to do is accumulate like a running product over time. And I know that a great way to kind of get that pattern is to create a variable, call it product. I'm gonna initialize it to one, that way you can store like a running product. By the end, I'm gonna return it, but I need to change it over time. So how can I get this, this final product? Well, I need to repeatedly multiply my base into this product but I need to make sure that that multiplication happens this exponent number of times. So let me start by giving myself a for loop that iterates exponent number of times. So I can say let i equals one and i is less than exponent. And then from there, I'll just do i plus plus. So this for loop right now is strictly for the sake of iterating exponent number of times, right? Actually, if I notice something here, I should be doing less than or equal to, right? So if like exponent is five, this iterates from one through five, which gives me five iterations, right? And on every iteration, what I just wanna do is take my product and multiply it by the base, right? So important detail here is I'm not multiplying my product by i, because I, I don't want that here. I wanna repeatedly multiply my product by the base number, right? So if my base is two, I keep multiplying by two. If my base is four, I keep multiplying by four. So let's try this, make sure it works. And then I think we'll trace through uh, these examples. So let me trace through the second one over here. And so what we'll say is we'll track our products. So we'll say product equals one at the start. 
And I have my i variable, which is strictly just for counting. And I know I start i equal to one as well. And we know that the base doesn't change, right? So we don't need to really mention that one. So how does this code run? Well, we set product equal to one, that's okay. And now we begin our for loop. So i is equal to one, and I check is one less than or equal to exponent, that is, is one less than or equal to three. That's true. So I take my base, which is four, and multiply it into my product, forever changing that product, right? So one times four is four. Next iteration, I increment by one. So now i is two. Two is still less than or equal to three. And so I take my base again, which is still four, it's always gonna be four, and multiply into my product. So four times four is 16. And then finally, last iteration, I increment by one. So now my i is three. And I check, is three less than or equal to three? That's true. So I take my base of four, multiply into my product. 16 times four would give me 64. Our for loop is done iterating, right? And then I just return my final product of 64. Nice. So now let's work on this sensor E problem. And so in this one, what I want to do is take in a string as an argument and return a new version of the string where all characters that are E's are replaced with stars, right? And so let me start by defining my function. And this time around, let me start by thinking about what data I want to return, right? So I want to return a new string and I don't have to create and add characters to that string over time. So let me just do that. I'll say a new string equals an empty string. And I should return that by the end, but for now, I need to be sure to add characters to it. Otherwise it's gonna be empty by the end, right? And so what I'll do is I'll consider the characters of my original string. So let me just grab them one by one by writing that classic iterative pattern, right? So I'll say let i equals zero, go up to but not including the length of my string and hit every character along the way. So by now you should know that if I save, let's say this variable, so I say let char equals string at index i, this would just give me you know, every character one by one. So S, P, E, E, and so on. And what I wanna do is check a condition, right? If the character is an E, then I need to replace it with a star. So let me just go ahead and check that, right? If the char is equal to the character E, then what I should do is take a star and add it to my new string, right? So I'll say new string plus equals star, right? So this has the effect of kind of replacing every E with a star. Uh, and then afterwards, what I can do is say else the character is not an E. So I could just add that plain old character to my new string, right? Because I still want to include it. So I have some nice conditional logic inside my for loop, right? So for every character of the original string, if it's an E, add a star to my new string. If it's not an E, then just add that plain old character and leave it as it is. Only after I'm done adding all of my characters to my new string should I return that new string, right? So let's give this a run. And there we have our function censoring all of the E characters. All right, let's work on the last problem here. It's a pretty classic computer science problem. So in this FizzBuzz function, what I wanna do is take in a max number as an argument. My function should print all numbers less than or equal to the max that are divisible by three or five, but not both three and five. So that's gonna be pretty interesting. And like usual, this function, because it just wants to print, doesn't need to return any value. Just make sure you console.log. So let's really make sure we understand the examples here. So when someone calls FizzBuzz of 18, the first thing I notice is uh, I wanna consider numbers that are less than or equal to 18, right? But in particular, I only want to print out numbers that are divisible by three or five, except those that are also divisible by three and five. So the key number that I did not print out over here is 15, right? It's kind of missing, it would have been like right here. Because 15 is a number that's divisible by three and five, so I don't print it out, right? If you look at my other numbers, right? Three is just divisible by three, five, just five, six, just divisible by three, nine, just divisible by three, and so on. And so let's start to build up this solution. So let me start with something that's familiar, right? So I'm just gonna start by iterating uh, for numbers that are less than or equal to my max, right? So that's a pretty basic for loop, nothing too fancy. So I'll say let i equals one and go up to and including the max. I'll hit every number for now. You can probably anticipate us using a conditional inside of this for loop, right? So let me focus on this bit. How can I get numbers that are divisible by three? So I can just check, hey, if my number i, if it's divisible by three, right, then its remainder is zero when I divide it by three, I'll console.log it. So let's try that. I'm gonna build up the solution slowly. So let's run this first example. Right, there I have all numbers less than or equal to 18 that are divisible by three. 
So I'm on the right track. I also need to print out numbers that are divisible by five. So we've kind of seen that pattern previously. I can just say, literally, or divisible by five, kind of gave it to you in the question, right? So I'll say, or, logical or, and I'll repeat that divisible pattern, right? Just for five. So I'm getting even warmer now. Cool, but now I have, uh, you know what, an issue. I'm mistakenly printing out 15, right? So 15 is a number that's divisible by both. And we kind of understand why our code's mistakenly doing that, because let's say i is 15, this is going to be true. This condition's also gonna be true. When I or true or true, that entire thing is true, so I print out 15. So how can I overcome that? Well, you just want to use more Boolean logic, right? So one thing I can do is check like another condition. So what I'll do is put this expression in parentheses to kind of group it together. And I know that this clause that I have highlighted, that says if the number is divisible by three or five. And what I want to say in addition to that is, and the number is not divisible by both. So how can I get an expression that checks if it's not divisible by both? Well, here I have a not, and I can just kind of reuse mostly this expression, except say and, right? So I know this is a long expression, but let's try to understand it in English, right? So how do I read this left to right? If i is divisible by three or five and not divisible by three and five. Remember that the and operation uh, only returns true when both things are true, right? So this highlighted clause right now expresses like if i is divisible by both, but then I'm applying a not to it. So this total expression now says if i is not divisible by three and five. Cool, so with that change, we should be good to go, right? I avoid the 15 here. And if I look at the second example here, this is pretty cool because I should avoid you know, any numbers divisible by three and five. So if I look at this range of 33, I should avoid things like 15, right, it's missing. And also I'll avoid 30. So I'll give that a go. All right, there I have it, I'm missing the 15, which is good. Also missing the 30. Nice. So this one's a little tough. Uh, do bear in mind how we built up this solution, right? So hopefully you're tackling these problems in nice chunks, right? So you should be able to recognize by now that I'll need to use a for loop for these problems where I need to consider numbers up to a max, right? It's a very classic pattern. And then we're just gonna work in some conditional logic, building it up over time, right? So first I wrote code to check if my number is divisible by three, then is it divisible by three or five? And then I added another clause to make sure I avoid numbers divisible by both, right? Really leveraging all of those uh, Boolean logic operations that we specified during our expressions lesson. All right, so that was our full walkthrough for this C set of exercises for loops. Uh, some tough problems in this one. Please make sure you have these problems down pat. So if you needed help during these problems and you needed to go through the walkthrough, I definitely want you to do these problems again and give it a shot on your own and keep practicing these until you can solve them without looking at the walkthrough or solution, right? We have some new material in store for the next few lessons and you wanna make sure you have this material mastered before moving on.